Everyone, over here! Is everyone awake now? Mona says that she has something important to tell everyone. The first glimmering daybreak after the return of the Imanakreish most certainly revitalizes one's innermost spirits. What Main Fräulein means is that she is ready to take on the next challenge. Yeah, we're rested and ready too! Alright, then I'll get to the crux of the matter. I just peeked into my scry glass and there's a new mirage forming on that island over there. And I have a feeling that this one is my mirage. Oh, so now it's Mona's turn! You were with us for all of ours. Seems like it's time for us to go with you into yours. Uh, well, I'm sure there's nothing to see, really. Lady Magistus, are you embarrassed? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's not like I'm worried about everyone judging me after seeing my embarrassingly pathetic mirage or anything. This emphatic no sounds rather like a thinly disguised yes. Well, <clears throat> astrologists are often regarded as something out of this world, right? But what if my mirage is nothing like that? Fret not. Your princessin is not so foolish as to entertain preconceived notions on how thy mirage should or should not present itself. Yeah, me neither. Not that I have low expectations of you, Mona, but personally, I think you're a kind soul. And you shouldn't feel like you have to live up to anything more than that. I'm sure Mona's mirage will stay true to her kind heart. Yeah! And it's not like we're going in there just to do some sightseeing. There's other reasons too, right? Really? Well, okay then. I suppose I'm not worried as long as everyone doesn't get too excited. All right, then. Let's get going. According to my scry glass, we've arrived at the Mirage. Okay, let's find the entrance first. Is that it? Over there? This looks like some kind of pool. Uh, we're not gonna have to swim to get in, are we? Huh? Wait, do we have a non-swimmer among us? No, I don't think that's the real problem here. <laughs> Someone's scared, huh? Well then, I'll go first. Oh, and there she goes! She's gonna show off her oh-so-perfect swimming skills now! <clears throat> Please be mindful of your wording, main Fräulein. Oh, right. See you later! Whoa! Mona dived right into the pool and disappeared! Let's catch up with her! What a spectacular structure. Wow. I've never seen anything like this. Hey, uh, Mona, your mirage is amazing. Though it falls short of the glorious Imanakreish, one must admit that it is an impressive realm nonetheless, Lady Magistus. <sighs> At least it's not showing me getting lectured by the old hag. Thank goodness. Well, what else would you expect of a genius astrologist's mirage? Okay, let's get started. Mm, there's a star over there! And now it's gone! Let's follow it! I've 
always been very proud of my talent in astrology. Huh? What in the... Is that my voice? I believe that astrology is a valuable discipline and that it is capable of revealing the inner workings of this universe. Oh, that's me talking to myself. When people discovered I could perform divination, they began to bombard me with inquiries. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? Being the honest person I am, I told them exactly what I saw through the scry glass. Though honesty may bring about resentment, I... I couldn't lie in the face of such a noble art. Astrology is a scam! That's insane! Can you please leave me alone now? I need some space! It felt as if I was being stabbed with razor-sharp knives formed by their disappointment. I could see the future, yet I felt miserable, as if I'd fallen into an abyss. Lady Magistus, this is heartbreaking. Ugh, please don't try to comfort me. It'll only make me feel embarrassed. Come on, you don't need to pretend in front of us. You need a hug? Oh, no <laughs> That was really how I felt back when I first started out in astrology, but... I've matured now. I'm no longer so easily swayed by random people's opinions. Who would have thought? Even Magistus, the court archmage, was not spared of vexatious times in her career. It must have been difficult to be misunderstood by others. I'm glad that you were able to move past that. Actually, there are many who have given up astrology due to similar circumstances. But I am a genius, so it's only fair that I'm able to accomplish what others cannot. It's pretty inspiring to hear you say all of that in an amazing place like this. Yes, good. Keep going. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, but the door is that way. All right. Now I'll let you shower me with praise after all the mysteries are solved. The surroundings appear to have changed. This isn't the beach we originally left. The area appears to be the mountains of Mondstadt. Wait, have we been sent back to Mondstadt? Yet the boundless ocean still surrounds us. There should be another pool around here for us to enter. Over here, y'all! Center. Oh, something seems to be floating on the water there. 
Uh, is it a painting? Or what is it? It seems to be hinting at a specific place. It is anticipating that the princessin would guide her loyal followers to the location that has been chosen by fate. Why is it always you that has to take the lead? <sighs> Whatever, doesn't matter. Let's just find this place first. Astrology reveals the truth unreservedly, but not everyone is willing to accept their fate. No matter. Running into difficulties is part of practicing the craft. I must also become stronger myself in order to convince people. I once met an adventurer on a mountain who also happened to be picking fruits. He was even kind enough to share some with me, so in return, I agreed to perform a divination for him. The results were terrifying. I advised him to give up adventuring as soon as possible, otherwise he could meet his end within the next two years. He fell silent for a while. Surprisingly, he didn't doubt the results of my divination like others had, but he looked quite perplexed. Even so, I have to keep going. Adventurers can't just give up in the face of hardship. With that, he picked up his pack and headed for the peak. However, try as I might, I could never forget that incident. Why is that? Oh, we're back again. So, uh, Mona, is that adventurer dead now? <sighs> That was the only time I ever saw him, and that was more than three years ago, which means he's no longer alive. But isn't there still a chance that he's alive? You know, like maybe you just made a mistake. You can't call it divination if you reject anything bad and believe the good unreservedly. That's just self-deception. Of course, casually performing divination for fun might be a different matter, but in my field of expertise, there's no room for lies. To contradict my own reading would be a blasphemy against astrology. Cruel, but truthful. Such is fate. I don't usually say things like this, but while we're on the topic, I really hope you don't confuse astrology with those fortune stick peddlers that you see along the streets. Astrology does not exist to please. We astrologists are here to verify and witness the truths of this world. Ugh. Which is why astrology is a disdained profession. It is a mighty art, but unfortunately one that annoys people nonetheless. Why dost thou protest so much, Lady Magistus? Thou seems not to be the sort with whom one would be loath to be associated. What main Fräulein means is that she's glad to be friends with you. No, that's not exactly what I said. Whatever has gotten into you, Oz, you misinterpret my utterances with increasingly alarming frequency. Oh my, why could that be? 
Perhaps I have been concerned that Main Fräulein could offend her friends and have been attempting to soften her words. Although you're the only astrologist I know, you've left an awesome impression on me. You're not annoying at all. Those who go snooping around for secrets, yet ignore whatever they don't want to hear, they're the ones who should reflect on themselves. Knowing your fate doesn't come cheap. If one could simply avoid fate with just a few words, no one would have to endure the pain of parting. Mona, don't take others' comments to heart. Follow your heart and never forget what's right. I don't need comforting, thank you very much. I'm very tough, you know. Oh, uh... Well then, um... <sighs> thank you. What dost thou say? Speak up and offer your highest reverence and blessings to the princessin. Okay, okay, your highness. Instead of making a scene, why don't you go collect the other fragments in the new location reflected by the pool? We can't enter the mirage without them! Main Fräulein, you are the only one with eyes sharp enough to locate the secrets. <sighs> if that's the case, very well. I shall proceed to the beach. Let's go, Mona. Oh, okay. Coming! <laughs> huh. We've returned here once more. Looks like the story's not finished yet. Let the adventure continue. Like it's waiting for something. Ha! Oh, there's another star here. Was the first star waiting for this one? Another house in Mondstadt? What are we doing in my house? Your house? This is your house? My, how unexpected. I heard Lady Magistus lived a modest life. But this abode... Look at the labels on these books on the ground! Only one of its kind? 990,000 Mora? Hey, that's super expensive! There are so many expensive-looking hardcovers over here. So this is what an astrologist's room looks like. The rooms are exquisitely designed. This place must be very expensive. Hey, I'm just occasionally out of Mora, that's all. I never said I was a pauper. You're not? Oh, so what about those times I treated you to meals and had you over to my place for dinner? Mean Fräulein, mind your phrasing. <clears throat> Thou wert blessed with the coveted opportunity to enter the palace of the Imanach Reich and meet with the Kaiser and Kaiserin de Verertelung. Or hast thou conveniently forgotten this magnificent occasion? Oh, yes! The stew and cold cuts your mother made were heavenly. <laughs> I could go for some more of that right now. 
Lady Magistus, this is not the time for such things. Is that Mondstadt cuisine? I want to try some. I heard Mondstadt has lots of local delicacies, especially meat dishes. Hmm. Then I shall extend to you the honor of meeting the Kaiser and Kaiserin with me on a future occasion. Really? Hey, we should go too! Now that you mention it, it has been a while since I visited a friend's house. I shall gladly oblige. Oh, but shouldn't we bring some sort of gift? Those two are very kind and understanding, so please, don't worry about that. Just bring yourselves. You seriously have to try her mom's cold cut platter. It's a specialty or something. <laughs> anyway, it's simply delightful. Not to interrupt, but perhaps we should start working on the puzzle at hand? Ever since I entered this place, I have found myself most preoccupied with that ornament. Oh, right. Astrologists are able to understand the most complex signs among the stars. And because of this, they are not allowed to show any arrogance. If one believes that astrology grants them unlimited power, they will face banishment by the stars. In the past, I was ignorant enough to think that I understood all fates in the universe. Maybe it was some form of punishment. But I became lost. I couldn't see the stars any longer. You should not get confused. If you should become confused one day, not even astrology will be able to help you then. That's what the old hag said. We astrologists can't predict our own fate. But today... Those words seem to carry a different meaning. I understand now that people won't always follow a beacon's guiding light. Even though the way forward may be dark and dangerous, they will still resolutely forge ahead. Fate is called such precisely because it cannot be altered or reversed. I understand the governing laws of the universe and have glimpsed secrets between heaven and earth. Observing it is enough for me. There's no need to force it to change. There are no perfect legends and no heroes that can save everyone. Instead of dwelling on my helplessness, what I should do... ...is seize my own destiny. View. Lady Magistus, I believe this is the firmest evidence yet of your immense genius. You truly are the greatest archmage in the history of the Immanachreich. Thank you. Although the Immanachreich really doesn't have that much of a history. Stars like diamonds and the moon like a pearl. This is the most brilliant night sky I've ever beheld. It's beautiful. To call up such a mirage, Mona must have a vast and boundless sea of stars in her heart. Hmm. Uh, 
I'm just thinking. These must be the things that we aspire to. This night sky is incredibly beautiful. In fact, I might go so far as to say it's even more beautiful than what I usually see in divinations. All the stars are in their rightful place. This is definitely my mirage. Only here can I see extraordinary sights like these. Extraordinary? Why do you say that? You know, the night sky of Tevat is truly marvelous. All the answers in the world seem to have been hidden within. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? As your stars move across the sky, they record all your life events in their path. And among all the people in the world, a considerable number will see their stars deviate from their path. When your stars are on track, it means you will be healthy, happy, and at peace. Conversely, if your stars go off track, everything will get worse. The starry sky in my divinations would never look as perfect as this. Some stars would lose their way, and others would fall. I wish everyone could be happy and stay on track. To this end, I offer advice and tell the truth. I know it's useless. All fates are already revealed in the night sky with mine too, just another among them. I can't change anything, even so. Outside of astrology, outside of the words of truth, I still cling to the wisp of an irrational fantasy. We must all live within the confines of reality, but... Call me presumptuous. But I still believe in miracles. In this vast sea of stars, there are stars for you, for me, for everybody. What are the chances of one star encountering another? Are these encounters not the most wonderful miracles in all of destiny? <laughs> I don't know. But within Tevat, the stars in the sky will always have a place for us. Even if astrology is resolutely rational, fate remains arbitrary, cruel, but romantic. <laughs> I think I figured out what those stars are hiding. Now I will seize my own destiny. transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. We're back here again! So... Are we completely out of the Mirage? How strange. My Mirage didn't contain any hints on the Tui or the Machine. Does that mean they had nothing to do with these Mirages after all? Or perhaps these Mirages are a mere consequence and not part of a process at all? Um... Paimon's lost! I mean, these mirages were not steps toward solving the mystery, but rather a direct effect of whatever's going on. Someone did something to bring the mirages into being. As they were just passive side products, it was natural that they couldn't provide us with any useful information. In other words, those mirages were only about ourselves. Hmm. 
pure materializations of ourselves. Interesting. Hmm. Everyone, maybe we should go back to where this whole thing began. During our first day on the island, the Traveler and I checked out the Fatui camp together. We found a strange machine there, as well as some disoriented Fatui. The researcher who spoke to us claimed that the machine was just a Fatui industrial invention. He even promised to not disturb us. Right, right! And the Cappy Cap guy looked half asleep the entire time! He kept talking nonsense! I wonder, is it possible that madness and mirages are two different outcomes of the machine's influence? If so, everything can be traced back to that damaged machine. Except for the difference in how it affects people. This, I believe, is caused by differences between the affected people themselves. Oh. When you put it that way, it is indeed difficult to distinguish dreams and hallucinations. So what you're saying is, the device affected us differently because we are different from the Fatui. Yes. And according to our observations over these past few days, I think... The difference is that we all have stronger willpower. Yeah, I can get behind that. People with strong willpower will hallucinate instead of falling into madness. But those who break too easily can't maintain a stable mirage. In other words, we should go back to the Fatui camp and destroy that machine right away! No, it should be repaired rather than destroyed. What Main Fräulein means is that rashly destroying a machine we do not understand may lead to more serious consequences. It would be better to find a way to repair it first. Right. It pays to be cautious. If my guess is correct, that machine is capable of influencing the human brain. So we'd better tread carefully. So let's go now! There's no 